Thank you for joining the Colorado DOT in Fort Collins for the world's first unveiling of an autonomous work zone protection vehicle. This vehicle is designed, as you've heard if you listened to the previous press conference, to protect the workers in front of it from being injured or killed by any members of the traveling public that enter into the work zone. So as you can see right now, we have a live striping operation going on on the roadway. The orange truck in the front is a typical paint machine, typical striper. And we have an unmanned crash attenuator or impact protection vehicle following it. These striping operations are absolutely perfect for using the unmanned technology because they typically occur at a slow speed. We move around seven miles an hour and they're typically very linear operations, making it absolutely ideal for this to be the first operation where we pull the driver out of that following vehicle. Now, as, as you've heard from the press conference, there's a, a pretty high danger to the driver of these vehicles as we use them in almost any mobile maintenance operation. There has to be somebody driving this truck that's meant to be hit. So just for a few stats, in case you missed them earlier, in Colorado, in the last four years, we had at least 26 incidents where a CDOT impact protection vehicle was hit by a member of the public. And that doesn't even include the countless contractors that we also have working on our roadways at any given time. As soon as you add those in, that number is sure to grow very quickly. Down in Texas, they have one of these vehicles hit almost every week. So taking the, the driver out of that vehicle is absolutely key. In order to get this system working on our roadways, we had a, a team of transportation professionals who typically operate that striping vehicle and the, the follower truck there um, for many weeks on a closed track where we ran a few scenarios that depicted what we would come across in a striping operation. Initial testing was all conducted by the manufacturers and the vendors of the technology to ensure that it was in a safe working condition and then we went the next step to verify that performance and make sure that we were ready to be using it in our operations and that it fit the needs that we had on the road. Now as the, as the vehicles start to drive out of sight, we'll just cover right before they turn around how this system works a little bit. The leader vehicle is equipped with a, a very high precision GPS system. The the company Kratos that put this all together, they are a defense contractor and they have a history of technology just like this in the military to ensure that convoys in hostile areas can operate unmanned to reduce the risk to Americans overseas. So they have an extremely high precision GPS system that allows the position data to give us plus or minus four inch accuracy. That information is picked up by the following vehicle and it matches position, it matches heading, and it matches speed while keeping a constant gap distance to make sure that it perfectly matches the maneuverability of that lead vehicle. Now that four inch accuracy was extremely important to us because we wanna make sure that when this is out in an operation, that vehicle is not straying from its lane. It's doing exactly what the striping vehicle in, in the lead position is so that we can ensure that this technology is not only safe for DOT workers, but is also in the best interest of the traveling public. In addition to the following capabilities of it and, and the ability to get the driver out of the truck, having an unmanned system also uh, adds a couple other advantages. The unmanned system is a lot more precise at being able to control the gap distance, which decreases the likelihood that a car will try to cut in between the protection vehicle and the actual maintenance vehicle. As you can imagine, that's a very dangerous situation as, as soon as that car cuts in between, you lose the protection for the leader vehicle. So the, the constant gap maintained by the autonomous system really helps us cut down on those incidences. Additionally, when something hits that protection vehicle, the driver of the vehicle will normally hit the brakes and bring the vehicle to a stop. But as you can imagine, that's a pretty difficult thing to do when you've just been hit by a tractor trailer at 75 miles an hour. So not to mention the driver could be too injured to, do, to stop the vehicle and to make any, any maneuvers. But you've got to take into account, even in the best case scenario, the reaction time of a driver and the, the ability of the driver to, to know quickly what's going on. But with this unmanned system, as soon as that impact is detected, the brakes are applied and the engine is shut off to ensure that this vehicle does 
the maximum amount that it can to protect our workers ahead of it. When we're running it in an operation like we are today, for complex or tight maneuvers such as turning it around at the at each end of the road, uh, we'll use it in manned mode to ensure that we can get the best possible performance. And then the the manned driver will switch the system over into autonomous mode, which you you may be seeing. And as soon as he does that, you can see him exit the vehicle. He'll walk over to that leader vehicle, and then everything is good to go, fully autonomous from there. So we'll be having the vehicles uh, do a run back towards us, still laying down paint, still in a, a live operation. In implementing this vehicle, CDOT's been working with a few partners that have, that have really helped us be the first ones in the nation and in the world to bring, bring this technology onto a roadway and to safely implement it into operational use. Kratos Defense and Security Solutions is the developer of the unmanned system. And as, I, as I'd mentioned, they, uh, they came from a defense contractor. They have done this type of thing for the military before, so they have a huge amount of experience in this type of system. They partnered up with Royal Truck and Equipment, which is a, a leading builder of these impact protection vehicles for State Department of Transportations and contractors and other highway construction organizations. The, the two of them now had a ready vehicle and they just needed a, they needed a customer and they needed someone who was willing to get out there and use the vehicle and put it in operation. So they reached out to the Colorado DOT and Colas, which is a, a global highway construction contractor that was um, doing some operations in the UK with this at the time. So Colas did a, a lot of running of the vehicle in uh, closed roadways at night and really helped build up all of the data that we got on the system to make sure that it could perform optimally. And CDOT was able to build on that and add in our own scenarios of what we expected to make sure that this vehicle was as ready as we could make it. And it is safe for operation, keeps our guys safe, keeps the public safe, and just is really a win-win for everybody. You might notice a big Road X logo when the vehicle comes by on the back of the vehicle. Road X is, is CDOT's division that is focused on implementing cutting edge technology to ensure that Colorado stays at the forefront of transportation technology and to make sure that the Colorado DOT is always pushing these technologies for a safer roadway, for a more efficient roadway, and to keep everybody moving towards the future. So they have been a huge part of this project in ensuring that we're on the forefront of autonomous technology and keeping our workers safe. Thanks again for joining the Colorado DOT on the unveiling of the world's first automated work zone vehicle. In this case, it's, a, it's an automated impact protection vehicle, otherwise known as a truck mounted attenuator or a traffic truck or a crash truck. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I just want to cover again the importance of these vehicles with a, a couple statistics from the Federal Highway Administration. Back in 2015, in work zones, we saw a crash every 5.4 minutes. Every day had 70 crash-related injuries and 12 crash-related fatalities in a week. Some of these are workers, some of them are the, are the traveling public. But a vehicle such as this, autonomous impact protection vehicle, is out there to reduce those numbers for both the public and for our workers. The vehicles are now just getting lined up to do a return run down Center Avenue in Fort Collins. We're laying down paint on the road with a striping truck, which is acting as the lead vehicle of the two vehicle system. The follower is our autonomous impact protection vehicle. And as you can see, there's a big, uh, big yellow bumper on the back. And that's a crash cushion to absorb impact energy anytime that a vehicle runs into the back of it. 
It's there to protect the workers in front of it, but it's, it's typically driven by a person. So the technology is ultimately taking that driver out of the, out of the vehicle and making sure that we don't, we don't only reduce the risk to the workers in front of the vehicle, but we reduce risk to the driver of the vehicle as well. The autonomous system in providing more consistent operations, such as a very consistent gap distance between the vehicles, also helps to keep the public safe as they're less likely to cut in between the vehicles and hit the leader. On the back of, of that autonomous impact protection vehicle, we also have a couple large message boards, including one of the industry's largest full matrix variable message boards. It's fully customizable. We can put any message on that that we want to really help increase the message to the public that there is a work zone ahead, that this is a slow moving vehicle that they do need to move over and pass, helping to, to keep that information flowing, which ultimately keeps our workers safe. Below that variable message board is a radar board, which tracks the speed of any oncoming vehicles, and it'll display the speed limit of the work zone and the speed of the vehicles approaching with a message that can be fully customizable as well. This will record the speed of the approaching vehicles. So in the case that there is an impact and someone does hit that protection vehicle, we have full video footage of the crash and we have speed data so that there's absolutely no question of what happened there, which again adds to the ability for us to not only protect our workers by making people more vigilant as they go into that work zone, but to make the public safer too, as they are less likely to hit the vehicle at that point. The two vehicles are now are just uh, starting to approach a corner on the street. As you'll see, there's uh, absolutely no issue with the follower vehicle tracking that leader around the corner. Um, as I mentioned previously, there is four inch accuracy on the autonomous system. So it will be within four inches of where that lead vehicle is. Uh, while we were running different scenarios to uh, verify the performance of the vehicle, we actually found that it would be to within one inch in many cases. So this vehicle is extremely accurate, stays within its lane, keeps everybody safe. We've had a lot of questions regarding uh, when we're operating the vehicles, what happens if, if a person runs out in between, will they be hit by the, uh, the vehicle that's there to, to protect people? And that uh, follower vehicle actually has a system mounted on the front of it that can detect objects, detect obstacles, and ensure that it can safely stop in time before it struck a car or a person or anything that might be in between the two vehicles. When that emergency stop occurs from someone cutting into the work zone like that, it requires positive human control to bring the vehicle back online in autonomous mode, ensuring that in the case that something happens, causing the vehicle to emergency stop, that one of the crew on the ground, who's extremely experienced in these operations, has to be hands-on and provide positive control, ensuring that the problem is solved before they can bring that vehicle back in. If you look at the back of that striping truck, there's a a big windowed box and that's where the crew that's operating the paint gun sits. We call it the doghouse. In that, in that box, in the doghouse, are the controls for the follower vehicle. So from there, they can monitor the condition of the communications equipment. They can monitor 
the strength of the GPS signal and all of the things necessary to keep that vehicle running in autonomous mode. Additionally, there's two completely independent emergency stops that operate on different frequencies, allowing a fully redundant system in the case of any sort of interference or, or failure of one of those systems. One of those stops will also kill the engine of the follower. So in the case that you have any sort of issue where the vehicle needs to be shut down, for example, if it's, you know, it's, it's overheating, you have an engine fire, anything like that, all of that control is able to be done from the lead vehicle without ever putting a driver in harm's way to stop that from occurring. Now we'll see the vehicles approaching, just finishing up their run, striping the road. As you can see, you've got a nice consistent gap distance. The guys in the doghouse are leaning out, checking their paint. This is a live operation. This is exactly what we would do on any roadway. And we've got that protection vehicle following right behind, keeping everyone safe. Thanks again for tuning in and watching the Colorado DOT's first live demonstration of an autonomous work zone vehicle.